Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is I, your host, Mr. Sean, and this is Chimera Miniatures' official YouTube channel. One of the hardest things about creating content for YouTube is just figuring out what kind of content your audience wants. For the majority of the life of this channel, I've been lucky to see my videos get even 20 views, but after posting two different RPG horror story videos, uh, the views have been quite a bit more, uh, still small by high-end YouTube standards, but getting over 100 and over 400 views in less than a week is monumental for this channel, so thank you. As you have shown me this is what you want to see, I will be doing many more of these videos in the future. Sorry my voice is a little different, I was up late drinking last night while playing D&D. So before we get to the RPG horror stories, as always, the ad. This channel is not monetized, I have no Patreon, what I do have are custom miniatures. I specialize in RPG miniatures and customized Heroclix miniatures, including my specialty, not safe for work, Heroclix miniatures. I have recently started taking commissions. Up on the screen you can see three characters I was commissioned to make from Thundar the Barbarian. I have two pricing scales when it comes to commissions. If you would like one of my custom kitbashed and painted miniatures, the cost is $10 base per miniature, along with the cost of materials as well as shipping. Materials being any pieces I have to outright buy in order to make the miniature you've requested. If you merely wish for me to repaint a miniature you currently possess, then it is $5 a miniature plus the cost of shipping, and I will ship it back to you once I have repainted them. If you are interested in commissioning a miniature, you can reach me on any of my social medias or email. Links are in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get to today's RPG Horror Stories. Our first story today comes from user Glittering Mix 1301 DM uses my character for her sexual fantasy. This one has been tagged as long and not safe for work. Throw away account because my friends lurk here. I was in a D&D campaign for about a year now. My character was a homebrewed kobold barbarian. During the start of the campaign, I convinced her to allow my kobold to essentially shift into a dragonborn when he raged via magic tattoos. This was due to him being from a tribe of kobolds who favored strength and chose their champion via gladiatorial combat. The purpose of the champion was to serve as a display of strength and power to the rival tribes. Though being slightly airheaded, he was very much into blood sports and honored combat, with a severe case of small man syndrome. So he would rage often when being teased excessively about his height. This is important to the story. I'd say the moment red flags started popping up was when after one interaction several months in with a traveling merchant NPC. When bartering for a magic weapon she had on sale, she made a snarky comment about him being too small for it, and so for the sake of fun and context, I popped rage and aimed to intimidate her. I'm not sure if I failed or succeeded that role, but she made a counteroffer to sleep with my character in exchange for a discount. Obviously I had nothing to lose, so I accepted, and after that it went downhill from there. OP, you made some mistakes here. Sure, we the internet wizards know that this is an RPG horror story, so it's gonna go downhill. We have the benevolent gift of hindsight, which you did not have at the time, but you did make some mistakes that in the moment uh, you shouldn't have, but I do see how you made them. We see a lot of stories on this subreddit where a male DM or even player uh, gets it in their mind that, oh, we're we're fucking in game, so we're gonna probably fuck in real life, or even just dating, uh, and that is, that's always something people are wary of when they get into these games because they know that's a thing, but you said you have a female DM, so I'm thinking maybe you thought you were safe in this case. And that OP is a terribly naive and misogynistic attitude. Women can be just as down bad and thirsty as men. It's one of the necessary evils of the game that players are going to attempt to seduce NPCs, but when an NPC attempts to seduce you and it's just a random encounter and it's not really like story-based, always be wary. The amount of female NPCs trying to get under my barbarian's skin was never ending. Of course there were the intentionally flirty ones who were in my character's face about it, but there were some who played it passive-aggressively. It got to the point where most of my interactions with female characters turned into a teasing session, which I was sort of thrown off by. I grew tired of it and started outright rejecting the advances. And this is where it gets worse. OP, you haven't really described the DM at all at this point, um, but other than that she's, you know, of course, female. But I feel like in this situation, if you, OP, were a woman, maybe you are, you haven't specified, you're playing a male character, but if you were a woman and the DM was a man, you would have picked up on the vibes they were throwing a lot quicker. I feel like, again, there's this whole, like, men are predators, women are not kind of thing that has allowed this DM to kind of, like, stealth predator you. Oh, but, but she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. Nice. Nice. Uh, once, once is just, hey, we're, we're having fun, twice is now it's a bit, and if it becomes that every interaction you have with a female NPC 
becomes this weird, teasing, flirty, sexual encounter, the DM is sus. There's a lot of stories on Reddit where if you were to swap the genders, the is you know is the person being good or bad, right or wrong, becomes way more apparent because we have these kind of preconceptions. And I feel like the fact that the DM is using female armor to cloak this weird mentality and weird fetish she has for your character. That being said, you really should have picked up on this. One day, my kobold suddenly loses the ability to transform for seemingly no reason, so I thought it was a special arc made for my character. I have him return to his tribe and talk with the shaman to find out why he's losing his power and to get some guidance on how to getting his powers back. DM tells me that the marks of the champion are a symbol of conquest and is fueled by spilling blood or claiming others. Which from this point on essentially meant that in order to have my kobold undergo a transformation when they raged, I religiously needed to either A. Outright murder someone or B. Bone someone with the intent to make them pregnant. Guys, we are most assuredly kink-friendly on this channel, but the thing that is missing here is consent. OP didn't ask for his character to be a sexually desirable dynamo or anything like that. This is something that the DM is putting on OP that he did not ask for as a player, and that is a failure as a DM and honestly just a failure as a human being. The biggest part of kink acceptance is consent. And honestly, not just the consent of OP, but the consent of everyone at the table. You have to be very specific when, you know, getting the game together that, hey, are we going to have explicit sex scenes or are we going to do what most tables do and just fade to black? And if you're more or less forcing a player to, even if you're fading to black, if you're constantly forcing them to do that in order to play their character, which was not created as a horny bard or something of the like, then you are failing as a dungeon master. The two most important things in D&D are also the two most important things in BDSM. Consent, and the dungeon master needs to make sure that everyone's having a good time. Needless to say, I was confused at first, but when I asked the people at the table in private, the solutions were murdering some bandits or going to a brothel. Since no one made a fuss, I just kind of kept my mouth shut about it. But it was at this point I started losing touch with my character. But the icing on the cake was when we captured a sorceress lackey of the big bad evil guy, and I went to interrogate them in the cells. And instead of being intimidated, she ended up casting charm on my barbarian. He failed. And the DM had me roll another will save to resist their attempt at seducing him. He failed again, and in a lustful rage, they apparently ended up doing it through the bars, and I got no further information. Alright everybody, first of all, let me just say that at my table, using charm person to try and get someone to have sex with you against their will, NPC or player, is a strict no-go. The fact that the DM is derailing the plot, they have, they have captured the the big bad guys lackey they're trying to get some information and instead she uses it just to kind of be this weird oh no instead of you getting any information we're gonna fuck through the prison bars because that's a fantasy i had because of a porno i watched i get the sense that this dm really just needs to you know woman up and just ask you out of game hey do you want to fuck sometime I don't claim to know who you are, OP, but, you know, I mean, in the case of nerdy single people playing D&D, if this girl were to ask some random single guy, hey, you want to fuck, I mean, odds are about 50-50 that the guy would say yes. Oh, but, but she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. Nice. Nice. If she's really this down bad for you, she should just shoot her shot instead of trying to hide behind the DM screen for it. But when the DM's weird kinks start derailing the momentum of the story in the game, that's, that's another DM failure. After that incident, I checked out. I dodged a few sessions without telling anyone before just letting them know that I quit entirely. Okay, so that story ended a little anticlimactically. It does happen. I guess my final question for OP is, is if the DM had shot her shot, would you have said yes, IRL? And don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not asking, like, if she were to have said that now, but, like, if she had chosen to say, like, hey, I like you, would you maybe like to do something sometime, go on a date, IRL, before all this weird, creepy harassment happened, would you have said yes? Guys, you, you can find love at the D&D table. I am engaged to a wonderful woman that I met when she joined my D&D campaign, but that was never the... That was not what we were planning when she joined. She joined to play D&D. And over the course of several years, our friendship bloomed and we eventually started dating. 
and the rest is history. But that being said, I was never like that as the DM, I was not flirting with her at the table and nor was she like trying to seduce NPCs in order to secretly flirt with me. I can't stand people that try to hide behind the visage of a D&D PC or NPC in order to flirt with somebody that they don't have the stones to flirt with in real life, especially when they're forcing that situation on the other person. This was clearly a case of a DM harassing a player, and oddly enough, the genders were more or less swapped from the way it normally goes this time, and I think that's why the rest of the party probably didn't either notice anything, so they didn't stand up for OP, or even maybe they even ribbed OP for not being into it. Oh, but, but she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. Nice. Nice because the lady DM is flirting with his character, and it's just like, I'm sorry guys, but consent applies both ways, and D&D is just about getting together at the table and having fun. It's not the place to try and force somebody to flirt back with you. Our next story comes from Toss This Shit 75 and is entitled, Pregnancy Fetish Ruins Player Character. This one is classified as short, but I'm also going to go out on a limb and say it might be not safe for work. Definitely got a weird theme going this video. I don't know how else to put this since I've gotten criticized for telling this story before, so let me try again. Please don't make your character have sex non-stop in-game. She even had the DMs, who were clearly uncomfortable with the idea, roll for pregnancy each time. Now granted, they played a kobold so they can lay eggs, but it's still weird as shit knowing one of your current characters on a dangerous slash potentially deadly quest is pregnant and needs extra help slash rescuing. Special treatment much? She later admitted it to being one of her fetishes. Yeah, no. I noped out of that game so hard, I felt it. The game hasn't been started since then, by the way. Edit. I also want to mention this PC tended to rag a lot on my PC and created a very harsh environment for us. There was constant bickering a lot and nobody was really a huge fan of them. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today's video is brought to you by the concept of consent, as well as the letters N and O, which oddly enough, form a complete sentence. Guys, you are allowed to be into whatever you want. It is perfectly okay to have a breeding kink. It is completely okay to run an erotic D&D campaign. What it is not okay to do is decide as either a player or a DM that you are going to force that on the other people involved without their express consent. I know there for a while in the D&D community, those consent sheets of what players are and aren't okay with in-game came up, and there was it was very divisive in the community, but at the same time, I don't like using those sheets, but I do hold my players to a standard that if what they're doing is making other players or myself uncomfortable, or if what I'm doing is making them uncomfortable, we will have a talk about it and we will correct the behavior, or if we if one of us doesn't, then that's when we have to escalate things. While this quote-unquote horror story is more of a rant than a genuinely well-written story, I will say that their uh, sentiment does ring true. Just like in the last story where we had a DM forcing her kinks onto the player's kobold, this one, it's kind of, there. this is a player's kobold forcing her kinks onto everybody else, and that's not okay. It is kind of funny that both of these stories, which I picked at random, the, uh, the gender of the offending party is is female, which is not typical of these. Normally it's some weird neckbeardy dude causing these issues. But again, at the end of the day, as a DM, my job is to make sure everyone is having a good time. And that me if that means policing my behavior or other people's behavior, so be it. Because if anybody involved in the game is the cause that other people aren't having a good time, they are toxic to the table. At the end of the day, this is all fun. This is a game. Everybody wants to have a good time. And if that is consensually agreed upon by everybody, that that means you are going to bang and your players are going to get pregnant or whatever, so be it. But unless that has previously been agreed to, don't, don't bring it into the game. All right, guys, sticking with this theme we've established, our final post of the night comes from Kuma from Arg and is entitled, DM and wife get us involved into their weird sex games. Uh, this one is tagged double not safe for work. Ooh. Years ago, during an RPG dry spell, I decided to visit a gaming club not far from where I used to live. I GM'd a couple of games there, and one time I decided to play. That sounds like the exact opposite of an RPG dry spell. The guy who organized the location wanted to run a game of Mechton Z, a mecha anime RPG set in the world of Gundam Seed. As I said, we're staying on form, so Seed in some form or another does make an appearance. I decided to play a mechanic with aspirations of becoming a pilot. 
The rest of the team involved the gunner of the ship, a cartographer who only joined the military to pay up for college, and the last member of the team was the GM's wife. She decided to play an idol in the spirit of Lynn Minmay from Macross. The difference is that she wasn't a pop star. She was a porn star. Half of the table was underage. Nope, nope, this is no good already. This has female predator written all over it. God, this, this, this story is right on track with what we've been talking about this video. Oh, but, but she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. Nice. Nice. And the GM and his wife were in their late 20s. Shit got weird fast. I thought we were going to do some exploration, find a quest, take a mission, and have some combat. No. The whole session was basically the wife's character shopping for outfits for her shoot, and then the actual shooting of a porn video. They got a bit too descriptive, looking into each other's eyes as the wife described with all detail how she was getting plowed by three guys. Um, I'm a strong proponent of always fade to black, but especially when you have minors at the table. These two people that are almost in their 30s are describing sex scenes to a bunch of children. Th that has to be illegal on some level. When I set out to make this video, I did not realize that all three of the random stories that I just picked off of this subreddit were going to be about female predators, uh, but I think this one is by far the worst because this is a grown woman who is getting off to describing these acts to children. Oh, but, but she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. Nice. Nice. I didn't read any of these three stories before recording this, so the fact that somehow I managed to just randomly pick three stories where one of the main aggressors is a woman uh, kind of blows my mind. As soon as that started, I was fucking weirded out, faked a call to my cell phone, and excused myself from the table, never to return to that gaming club. Fucking weird. So, OP, I, I understand that the guy who was doing this organized the club, but you just left? You didn't tell anybody about it? You let them keep, I don't know, you, you let his weird girlfriend keep describing sex scenes to children? I, I'm a little ashamed of you, OP. So there you have it, guys. Three stories about how sometimes it's not always the creepy dude at the table. In these times where we strive for equality, it is important to know that women can be just as thirsty and down bad as the male tabletop players. The lesson here is that when getting ready to play a tabletop RPG, there's a few things you always need to bring to the table. You need to bring your dice, your snacks, your character sheets, and your boundaries. Consent is not optional, and no is a complete sentence, and if you want to express your breeding kink at the table, then join a table that's cool with that. Don't just bring it out of nowhere and expect everyone to be okay. The worst thing you can do in a tabletop RPG is ruin everyone's good time. Because at the end of the day, that's all any of us are looking for, is a good time. Where are they taking him? To be hanged. Apparently, he had a very good time. And you can have that. Just make sure that you go and look for it with the right people. But with that being said, everyone, I am Mr. Sean. This is Chimera Miniatures' official YouTube channel. Please check the links, maybe buy a mini, and I hope you alpha great day and an even beta tomorrow. Bye bye